Hi everybody, it's Mr. Westner, and I'm back with another edition of Mr. Westner's Read Alouds. Uh, but unlike usual, this area behind me today is not a green screen. Uh, normally my backgrounds when I'm reading to you are just green screens, uh, with me sitting in a chair in my house and uh, recording and talking to you. But today I wanted to come out into nature, because we're going to read a really cool book. It's called Take a Wetlands Walk. And we're going to get through this kind of slowly. We're going to take it a little bit at a time. And I'm in one of my favorite places in central Pennsylvania. I'm here at Canoe Creek State Park uh, so that I can kind of show you some of the features in this book as we talk about them. So uh, behind me here, you see, of course, the lake of Canoe Creek. Then along the edges of the lake, you see a marsh. This particular area I'm on is called the Marsh Trail. Uh, so we're going to be talking about some of the characteristics of wetlands as we look through this book together. Uh, and we'll just do a few pages a day and we'll work through it and talk about it and explore the beauty of Pennsylvania's wetland ecosystems. So let's begin. Okay, this book is nonfiction, okay, of course. Uh, it's talking about a real type of ecosystem. It's talking about wetlands. As a nonfiction book, it has a lot of our nonfiction text features. We have highlighted vocabulary words. We have a new text feature that I know in fourth grade we haven't talked about a lot yet called sidebars. And we'll talk about those and the information in those as we go as well. Uh, but it starts out with kind of a good introduction. It's a type of nonfiction in this first section called narrative nonfiction, where even though the author is presenting nonfiction information, she's doing it in sort of a story type of way. She's telling us a story. So let's go. Are you ready to discover nature in a wetland? And by the way, I always like to point out the author. This author is Jane Kirkland. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, she lives in Pennsylvania. I know the Bush book publisher, uh, Stillwater Publishing, is in Pennsylvania. And so I found these books a few years ago, and I've absolutely loved them. Uh, there's actually a whole series. They're called Take a Walk Books. So you can definitely check those out uh, at takeawalk.com. Uh, you can also visit the author's page at janekirkland.com. So there's lots of them. Take a backyard. There's a few listed on the back here. Take a backyard bird walk. Take a tree walk. Take a walk with dragons and, or with butterflies and dragonflies, not dragons. Take a city nature walk. Take, take a beach walk. Take a cloud walk. Take a winter nature walk. So lots of great, uh, great resources there. And if you enjoy the style of this book, I'd encourage you to pick up your own copy and check out some of those other books as well. So the first heading says, are you ready to discover nature in a wetland? And by the way, the sounds you hear around me, I hope these are coming through on video because these are the sounds of a wetland. There's a frog croaking here behind me. Uh, I hear a red-winged blackbird off in the distance, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So hopefully we'll get to see some of those creatures as well. Are you ready to discover nature in a wetland? I have had many wetland adventures, but one of my favorites happened right in my own neighborhood. One June morning at 7 a.m., my phone rang. It was my neighbor, Carol. Come quickly, she whispered. There's a monster in my yard. And bring your field guide. Cool, I said, a monster. I grabbed some field guides and my camera on the way out the door. Anybody know what a field guide is? Have you figured that out? Maybe as we continue reading, see if you can figure out what a field guide is, and we'll talk more about it later. Of course, I didn't bother to look for my field guide to monsters. There is no such thing. So I brought my bird, reptile, and mammal guides with me. When I got to Carol's house, she was standing in her front yard, and another neighbor, Jackie, was standing in Carol's flower bed. Jackie had a broom, and she was brushing off the shell of a really huge turtle. The turtle had dug a hole with its hind legs, and the back half of its body was down in the hole. The turtle was covered with dirt, and I guess Jackie thought she was helping it by brushing off the dirt. Can you identify this turtle? Jackie said. It's the biggest turtle I've ever seen. I didn't know anything about turtles. I paged through my field guide, there's a good hint, and quickly discovered that there sure are a lot of different species of turtles. Finally, I found a turtle in the book that looked just like the one in the garden. It was huge and not very attractive. Jackie, I called out. Does that turtle look like it has a dinosaur tail? Jackie answered, sure does. Quickly, I stood up and yelled out, Jackie, step away from the turtle. It's a snapping turtle. She's here to lay her eggs, and she can hurt us if she feels threatened. Jackie stepped away, and we all watched the turtle from a safe distance. When she was done laying her eggs, she returned to the lake. 
It was a very cool discovery, and I'll never forget my first ever snapping turtle sighting. And she has a photograph here of that as well. It says, I'm so happy that I took my camera to Carol's house that day. This turtle laid about 30 eggs. Snapping turtles can be found in the eastern half of North America, and they are found in our area uh, in central Pennsylvania as well. A day to remember. She says, I hope you have exciting adventures on your wetlands walk. And that's one of the things about this book. She's encouraging you not just to read about this, not just to watch my videos, but to come out here yourself, to come find a wetland area. And they're all over. They don't have to be big areas like Canoe Creek, although it's a great one to go to. Uh, you can go anywhere and find a wetland area. And we'll talk about how you identify one when you find it. I hope you discover birds, plants, insects, mammals, crabs, and more. And if you should come across a snapping turtle, please stay away from it. They're really dangerous. They have really powerful jaws. She goes on to say, The lake where I live is a wetland. Snapping turtles are only one of the species of turtles that live here. They are also, there are also other reptiles and amphibians, wildflowers, insects, spiders, butterflies, moths, trees, birds, mammals, and more. This book will help you prepare for your wetland walk so you can find exciting plants and animals too. It is divided into three sections. Get ready, get set, and go. You can read this book in any order you wish. And that's one of the characteristics of a nonfiction text. Maybe I'm just interested in information about marshes. Maybe I'm just interested in information about amphibians. Maybe I'm not really interested, although they're really cool, in uh, saltwater marshes and estuaries because they're not around us here in Pennsylvania. So you can kind of decide how you want to read this book if you were reading this on your own. And you can go to the information that's most relevant to you first. Here in the Get Ready section, I'll explain what a wetland is and show you several kinds of wetlands. In the Get Set section, you'll learn about some very special wetland residents and about the unique features that help them to survive and thrive in wetlands. The Go section will teach you which plants and animals to look for in the different wetlands. It also contains a page for you to take field notes, a page to record your observations, and photos to help you identify the plants and animals you find. Throughout this book, you'll find artwork and essays by kids. You'll read about other wetland adventures, and you'll read fun and interesting sidebars. Once you know where to look for, or once you know where to look and what to look for, you'll see just how exciting wetlands can be. You'll wonder why you never thought of a wetland as a nursery or food factory. You'll understand that wetlands are not only cool places to explore, they are very important habitats. You'll start to notice wildlife and plants you never noticed before, and you'll wonder, how did I not see these things before today? Soon you'll have your own wetlands adventures to talk about. Are you ready to discover nature at the wetlands? Uh, there's another section here that says be prepared, so when you do go out and explore, it says go safely, stay on trails and boardwalks, and actually that's where we are right here, is this is a boardwalk. So not quite like the boardwalks at the beach, but it's a boardwalk that uh, allows you to walk through whoa, this area without disturbing anything or without getting yourself uh, stuck. Okay. Take nothing away. Never take plants or animals from the wetlands. Everything that lives here, everything that lives in nature has an important role to play. So even if we find something really cool, you want to leave it here so that it can do its job. You want to take nothing with you. Uh, there's a saying in nature that says, take nothing with, or leave only footprints, take only memories. Okay? Leave only footprints, take only memories. Meaning you're not taking anything away with you. You're not leaving things behind. You're not leaving trash or litter uh, or anything that's going to destroy this ecosystem because wetlands in most ecosystems are very fragile places. Uh, oh, and that's the next sentence, actually. Leave nothing behind. Don't leave food, trash, or anything else behind. Okay. All right, we're going to go on to the next page. Get ready. What makes a wetland a wetland? So why is this a wetland? Well, part of the reason is it's land and it's wet. I'm going to grab the camera here and bring you out with me. And you can see that before we get into the actual lake itself, you can see there's still land here. So this area is the wetland. 
okay? It's very wet. You can see the water kind of seeping up around my boots, I believe, there. Uh, so it's very wet. It's still land, though. And so that's where we are. This is a wetland, okay? This is a marsh on the edge of the lake. Out. To explore a wetland, you first have to find one. To find one, you have to know what to look for. There are many different types of wetlands, but in general, three factors make a wetland a wetland. They are, now we're going to have some big vocab in this book, some big new words. Uh, they're called domain-specific domain vocabulary, which means that we're not going to really encounter these words outside of this topic. They're very specific to what we're talking about uh, in some of these cases. So one of the things they mention is hydrophytic vegetation. Now, you may have heard the prefix or the word part hydro before, okay? Maybe hydroplane, uh, if your car is spinning or losing traction on water, uh, but hydro means water. So hydrophytic, phytic or P-H-Y-T-E, I think, I forget if that's Latin or Greek, I believe it's a Greek root word root, and it means loving. So water loving, hydrophytic vegetation. A wetland must be home to plants that can live in wet soil. Hydrophytic plants. These plants are called hydrophytes. So they have to really, really like water. You saw these plants out here behind me. They're, immer they're completely underwater, the roots. It's not like when you water your garden and you add some moisture to the soil. These plants are covered in water. So that's the difference. And I know right now they're kind of dead and brown looking, but it's very early spring. I'm recording this on April 4th, 2020. So as we get deeper into spring, those plants are gonna get green again. Uh, or new plants are going to grow. You can actually see some new growth there at the base, and that new plant growth is going to emerge as well. So we have hydrophytic vegetation, plants that can grow with their roots completely covered in water. Okay. Hydric soils is our next feature, and that means soil with poor drainage that is so saturated with water that it has little or no oxygen, and that's called hydric soil. Okay. So when we're talking about hydric soil, that's what we're looking at out here. The soil in this area behind me that I just showed you is completely covered in water. It's saturated. That's a word that means soaking wet. Okay? If I have a damp sponge or a wet sponge uh, and I hold it up, it's not going to be dripping water. But if I have a saturated sponge, it's going to be just flowing water out of that sponge as I hold it up. So saturated versus moist, damp, wet. Wetland hydrology is our third feature here. It says the land must be covered by water or the soil soaked with water long enough during the year, not necessarily all year long though, to cause the soil to be hydric and to allow hydrophytes to thrive, to do well there. So what that's saying is it doesn't have to be wet all the time. We have a wetland area at the school I teach at, Foot of Ten Elementary, uh, in the school where a lot of you watching this probably go. I'm not sure who else will see this, but at our school we have a wetland. And in the springtime, like right now, there would be water in that area. Okay? It also helps handle some of the runoff from our school playgrounds and school parking lots. So that water is there sometimes, but if I go there in July, August, when it's drier, that area is not going to be very wet. It's going to be pretty dry. So it's wet enough during the springtime that it can allow those plants to live there. A wetland is an ecosystem, a place where plants and animals interact with one another. Within that ecosystem, there might be several kinds of habitats. Wetlands are found throughout the world. Okay. All right. I think that's a good place to stop for our first day of learning about wetlands. So we'll go ahead and take a break there and we'll come back another time and I will see you next time. Thanks everybody.